In this five part series, we're going to go from this to this. It's a CNC machine of my own design, which I'm calling the Stupid Strong CNC. In this video, we're gonna work on the electronics. To go from idea to actual part on the CNC takes four steps. The first is to design the part in CAD. I use a free piece of software called Fusion 360. Next, you need to convert that drawing into G-code that the machine can understand. You can use the CAM environment of Fusion 360 to do this as well. Then we need an interface to communicate that G-code with our CNC machine. Because I like free software, I use Chili Pepper, which is a web browser based piece of software that we'll get into in just a minute. Finally, you need a motor controller to interpret the G-code, move the stepper motors in the right direction so that you actually end up with a part. For this project, I've decided to use the Tiny G. Okay, this is quite literally my first time looking at the board. So the first step in the Tiny G documentation is to hook up the power supply. I got this one off of eBay. It's a Meanwell uh, 24 volt, that's important. I've got some black uh, SJ cable from the hardware store and an out or a switch or a plug. I'm gonna connect the black wire to the gold screw, the white wire to the silver, and the ground to the green one. This is ground, neutral, and maybe load. So we'll go black, white, green. Good. See that? Positive and negative. Next step is to actually hook it up into the tiny G. It says when you plug in the power supply, if you get a blue light, you're all good. If not, you ruin the board. So here we go, ready? Blue light. Blue light. Well, of course I do not have a USB cable with me. And we're back. I did not run home. I did buy this, but I got it from Goodwill for 79 cents. And I got a rubber band out of the deal. Uh, now it says to connect the motors, but it says don't connect them while they're in the machine. And I've already put them on the machine. Okay, I've got my motors out, and basically the instructions are saying to find which wires are pairs. Normally it's gonna be green and black and red and blue are paired wires, but you can test for sure by spinning the motor by hand and it spins freely. Green and black on this one, now when I spin, it's really hard to spin it. When I let go, it's really easy to spin. So I got everything wired up and that's kind of basically where the instructions end. My goal for this video was to bring you along for the ride with me as someone who knew nothing about the electronic side of things uh, and show you all of my faults and failures and stumbling along. It just was a complete disaster. It would have been completely unhelpful for you to go down all the little rabbit holes I went through. So instead, I have sitting next to me a working CNC. I have cut wood accurately with it. It is dialed in. It is not tidied up, but it's dialed in. And I think it'll be more helpful if I just show you exactly how I got here. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to try and get all three things in here. We've got the CNC, Tiny G, power supply you can't see, and at least maybe a little bit of my screen. I'll cut to a screenshot of the computer when I'm working there. So when you go to hook up the Tiny G, there's two separate kind of manuals. There's the connecting Tiny G page, which shows you the wiring and how to do that. I found this to be pretty good. It did not take me very long to get this set up. This was confusing. The Tiny board I have, Tiny G board I have is version eight with the firmware 0 0.97, 0 0.97. So you click this and you're given a JSON cheat sheet uh, and motor groups and a bunch of just random stuff you're supposed to just type in and you're supposed to type it in where? I don't, they don't explain how you hook this up. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. To communicate with the Tiny G board over there, you need to run something on the computer that you're gonna be controlling the motor controller with. You need to run a piece of software called Serial Port JSON Server. Once you extract it, you can either just open it in the folder. It doesn't install anything. It's just like a terminal script. Uh, I just drug it down here so that I have quick access to it. And it's pretty straightforward. You just click it, it turns on, and it opens terminal and starts this little script. Once you have that running, you can plug in a USB cable to your computer. So then what? Now we have our motors plugged into the Tiny G board. We have power. My hope was when I plugged this in that it would just work. I could just jog my wheels and it would work. Unfortunately, no such luck. What I didn't understand is where you even adjust these. Like, I don't, I don't know what jerk maximum or jerk homing means, 
let alone where to actually change that setting. Where you change that setting is in Chili Pepper, and I don't know why they don't tell you how to do this. You come into Chili Pepper and scroll down on the bottom right here and click on the Your Servers tab. Then you scroll down, and yours might look a little bit different. Uh, oh, and here's the link if you want. If you don't have uh, the JSON server running yet, click on the Download Serial Port JSON Server. Uh, but assuming you have that running, you come down, you come down, you come down, you come down, and click Scan down here at the bottom. If you have it running, you'll get a little uh, link that pops up. You click on that link. Now you come over to your port list and you want to find the port that you connected your CNC machine to. It's going to be a USB serial. In my case, it's uh, I'm looking for TTY USB serial DN01. Uh, you want to make sure that it's set on 115,200 baud rate and that it says tiny G here instead of defaults. Then you just click the check mark and click OK. You need to configure your tiny G to work with your motors, your spindle, and your drive mechanism. In my case, I'm using ball screws. You might be using belts, you might be using regular Acme lead screws. Uh, so you do have to do some research to figure out a couple of these settings. But to get to those, this is what took me forever to figure out. Come down here to the bottom where it says type serial port command. You type dollar sign, dollar sign, and press enter. Give it a second. And if we drag this window out a little bit, you can see all of the settings for my machine. If you scroll up to back where I typed dollar sign, dollar sign, uh, dollar sign, dollar sign, and here we go. You come down and you realize you have to change all of this, otherwise the Tiny G has no idea what it's doing with your particular motors and your particular machine. So let's go through quickly. Uh, just the settings that I changed, the ones that I didn't leave default. When we get to the M1, this is motor one. This is an important one, motor one. So you want to tell it which axis the first motor, you want to tell it motor one is either X or Y or Z, whatever you want it to be. In my case, I made it X. And so to change a value, you type dollar sign, type the little three digit code that it gives you on the left here. So for the map to axis, 1MA is what we want, so 1MA, you type the equal sign, and then the value options that it gives you. So in my case, it's set to zero for X axis, so I would type dollar sign 1MA equals zero, and press enter. At the bottom, it tells me mem one, M motor one, map to axis, zero, zero equals X. And it says, okay, it took that command, now motor one is the X axis. If I were to say dollar sign one MA equals one, now motor one is my Y axis. And I'm not gonna touch anything because now motor one and motor two would conflict with each other. So I'm gonna change that back. Dollar one MA equals zero, enter. Now motor one is my X axis. To change my motor two, dollar sign two MA equals one, map M2 to axis one, which equals Y here. So I hope that makes sense. That's as clear as I can make it because that's, it's just kind of confusing and it's pretty uh, complex how you have to set all this up. The step angle, this is important. Uh, this you just have to look up. Uh, most NEMA motors I believe are 1.8 degrees. Travel per, per revolution, this is the big one. Uh, and this I had to look up as well. I had to do a bunch of Googling to figure out that my particular screw balls. The 1605RM ball screws move five millimeters per revolution. So you type dollar sign one TR five millimeters and change it. And then I had to do this exact same thing the whole way through. Step angles for this motor is 1.8 degrees as well. Travel per revolution is five millimeters as well. Once you have everything set up, you can start testing with your jog wheels like I just did. X to the left, X to the right, forward, I am going to attempt the first cut on this machine. I'm hoping for a 50 millimeter by 50 millimeter box. Let's go a little faster, let's go all the way up.
I'm not, I have not looked. Come on, 50 millimeters. 49.92, that way. Fifty point one the other way. Wow. Let's go a little deeper in here. Forty nine point nine two on the back. Forty nine point nine. I will call that a success. I'll maybe <laughs> tweak that slightly. Fifty point one eight. Fifty point one zero. Unbelievable. There's the tabs. Perfect, just barely skimmed the waste board. I don't know how that was that close, that's awesome. I'm sure that was way too in depth if you're not planning on building a machine, but I can't not include it because it's such a big part of this build. And the next one though, we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna tidy up everything and make our first project with the homemade Stupid Strong CNC machine. Echo, turn the recording off. If you'd like to learn how to design parts to cut in a CNC machine like this, we sell an eight hour course called Fusion 360 for hobbyists and woodworkers. I'll leave a link in the description for a $30 off coupon. And in fact, you can watch me design this entire machine from the ground up as part of the extra credit section of that course.